Welcome once again to another study from the Word of God, a Bible class study from the Spring Hill Church of Christ, meeting at 405 Butler Street, Spring Hill, Louisiana. Our study for these lessons is from the book of Judges. As we've seen thus far in the book of Judges, it is in stark contrast to the book of Joshua. In Joshua, an obedient people conquered the land through trust in the power of God. In Judges, we're finding a disobedient and idolatrous people are repeatedly oppressed by their enemies going through the cycle that we always talk about in the book of Judges, we'll get to in just a few minutes. The name in Hebrew, Seftim, means judges. The word may not only carry the idea of maintaining justice and setting dis settling disputes, but can also have the meaning liberate and deliver. We find the first judges deliver the people and they rule and administer justice as well. In this lesson, we will be looking at Judges chapter 9, and we'll probably go through uh, to chapter 10. I had planned on going through 12, 7, uh, covering Jephthah, but a lot of material here, and so we'll probably cut off at the uh, end of chapter 10. The chronology of the book of Judges, and I think Steve Rudd, a friend up in Canada, preaching there for this chart of Judges' uh, timeline. The five indivisible units of chronology, he has this talked about, a time period 1350 to 1014, roughly, that he's looking at for judges here makes up about a total of 336 years, and we have various things that are happening. So a uh, real good chart to hang on to as you study, and uh, there's the uh, URL that you can go to if you'd like to get a copy of this chart. You can certainly go to Steve's uh, site there uh, and get a copy. Another chart that I like looking at is this one by Bible Projects. And uh, this has kind of been fun participating in this a little bit, some of the drawings and things. But we find that we have studied thus far chapters 1 and 2, uh, the Canaanites. They were an immoral people, and we have God's people in the midst, and that's what this is showing here of this moral corruption and this nation that sacrificed their children to Moloch. And we find them maintaining that separation in the book of Joshua until we get to the book of Judges. And then there we find that cycle goes seven times in the book of Judges. They sin follow after these idols. God allows them to be oppressed by some of the nations still around. After the oppression for an extended period of time, they repent, they call on God. God sends a deliverer in the form of a judge, and then the judge delivers them, and then they have a time of peace. An overview of Judges. Judges is the seventh book in the Old Testament. There are 21 chapters in the book. Of course, it's another history book. After Joshua's death, Israel instituted God's rule of 12 judges installed in lieu of a king. The nation quickly deteriorated due to its unfaithfulness of God. And the book outlines the cycle of betrayals, repentance, and some good judges are featured. We've covered the tribes refusing to drive out all the enemies, um, the first three judges. We covered Deborah, and we covered uh, Abimelech, and we, we've covered Gideon. And so with this lesson, we're going to basically look at Abimelech, and we'll look at Toler and Jer, and then we'll save Jephthah and Ibsen, Elon, and Abdon for 
the next lesson. So that's kind of where we're going uh, in this lesson. And on this chart here, you can see those seven cycles that they will be going through. And of course, the judges, as, as we know, are a prefigure or a type of Christ. And Christ is, of course, prefigured as the ultimate judge and deliverer of mankind. Here's the surrounding enemies that, of course, that uh, Israel had around them, the nations, Mesopotamians, uh, King Jabin, the Ammonites, the Midianites, the Moabites, the Amalekites, the Philistines. Uh, and so they are oppressed by different people at different times. And there's, there's a list of the judges that we have looked at so far. Once again, here's that cycle. Uh, looking at it in four steps. Here it is looking at it in six te steps, if you want to break it out, down a little further. Uh, split out Israel's crying out to the Lord, repenting, crying out to the Lord, God raising up to deliver. Israel delivered, they're at peace, and then they go back into the same cycle. Here's a list of the judges. Othniel, Ehud, Shamgar, Deborah, Barak, Gideon, Abimelech, Toler, Jer. That's what we'll be up to. And we'll have eight more after this lesson. Jephthah, Ebson, Elon, Abdon, Samson. Uh, then we'll have Machai's household and the migration of the Danites, the sin of the ben Benjamites and their punishment. And then we'll finish up. We'll start Samuel then next uh, with the Judge Samuel, the judgeship of Samuel. That's what we'll see. Another chart depicting the um, judges and the oppression that Israel faced in the book. And here's a book from Manna Maps. Uh, Carl Hennecke, Matt Hennecke were involved in this project to put this together. Some very good material there if you... Uh, look them up on the internet. You can find some good material there in that instance. Um, here's some more information about the judges. Uh, we have a Othniel, of course, 40 years of peace. And there's a note at the bottom that the Septuagint uh, uh, says 50 years. And I guess in that, give or take 10 years is uh, pretty accurate. And so there's the name of the judge, the type of it was it a major was he a major judge or just a minor judge? We have some that are just minor that weren't judges very long, and that's depicted on this chart. Uh, here's some more information about the judges, and then here's the areas they were from. We see uh, all the way through to Samson. Now we've talked about the bowels, the gods. Uh, and here is a depiction of their representation of that God of fertility, uh, God of the weather, well, God of the weather in this case, the, the balls. And then, of course, here is the Asherah, a female God that was God of fertility. And so that gives you an idea of of what they would look like if you would see them in a museum today. This is what you would see. And I think the Field Museum in Chicago is where I, I took this picture. So with that, again, let's look at chapter 9 and 10. I don't think we'll start 11, but we'll, we'll get 9 and 10 done anyway and, um, in this study. So Judges 9 and 10. The fifth period, and we're going to talk about Tola and Jer versing Abimelech's effort. Of course, Abimelech, of course, is the son of Gideon, um, Jeroboam, the judge Abimelech. Let's look at him. Chapter 833 all the way through 957, we have his exploits. As soon as Gideon died, the people of Israel turned again and whored after the Baals and made Baal Bareth their god. 
And the people of Israel did not remember the Lord their God who had delivered them from the hand of all their enemies on every side. And they did not show steadfast love to the family of Jeroboam, that is Gideon, in return for the good that he had done to Israel. This is Judges chapter 8, verse 33 to verse 35. Continuing on now. We begin to see in chapter 9, verse 1, truth and sincerity undermine. I want you to notice this as we look at verse 1. Abimelech, the son of Jeroboam, went to Shechem to his mother's relatives and said to them and to the whole family and clan of his mother's family. Here, getting ready to, uh, to abandon truth, to abandon God. In this section, chapter 9, verse 1. Next, we have, we show the rejection of this truth. Verse 2, we have it said here, Say in the ear of all the leaders of Shechem, which is better for you, that all 70 of the sons of Jeroboam rule over you, or that one rule over you. Remember also that I am your bone and flesh. And his mother's relatives spoke all these words on his behalf in the ears of all the leaders of Shechem, and their hearts inclined, watch this, to follow Abimelech, for they said, he is our brother. You know, that old expression, Bob's your uncle, that's where it comes from, putting your relative uh, in power, making him ruler in Scotland when the, when, uh, the man became uh, the prime minister of Great Britain. Verse 4, They gave him 70 pieces of silver out of the house of Baalbareth, with which Abimelech hired worthless and reckless fellows who followed him. He went to his father's house at Ophrah and killed his brothers, the sons of Jeroboam, 70 men on one stone. And all the leaders of Shechem came together and all of Beth Milo, and they went and made Abimelech king by the oak of the pillar at Shechem. So next we see truth and sincerity are now going to be recalled after all the, these hard times they're going to go through. So beginning in verse 7, when it was told to Jotham, he went and stood on the top of Mount Gerizim. Remember Mount Gerizim? There's the Mount of Blessing, Mount of Cursings, remember? And cried aloud and said to them, Listen to me, you leaders of Shechem, that God may listen to you. The trees once went out to the anointed king over them, and they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, Shall I leave my abundance by which gods and men are honored and go hold sway over the trees? And the tree said to the fig tree, You come and reign over us. But the fig tree said to them, Shall I leave my sweetness and my good fruit and go hold sway over the trees? And the tree said to the vine, You come and reign over us. But the vine said to them, Shall I leave my wine that cheers God and men and go hold sway over the trees? And so there's, there's the, the question. And then in verse 14, Then all the trees said to the bramble, You come, reign over us. And the bramble said to the trees, If in good faith you are anointing me king over you, then come and take refuge in my shade. But if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. And now therefore, if you acted in good faith and integrity when you made Abimelech, if you have dealt well with Jeroboam and his house and have done to him as his deeds deserve, for my father fought for you and risked his life and delivered you from the hand of Midian, and you have risen up against my father's house this day and have killed his son 70 men on a stone and have made Abimelech the son of his female servant king over the leaders of Shechem because he is your relative. 
Then he says, if indeed you have acted in good faith and integrity with Jeroboam and with his house this day, then rejoice in Abimelech and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech and devour the leaders of Shechem and Beth Milo and let the fire come out from the leaders of Shechem and from Beth Milo and devour Abimelech. And Jotham ran away and fled and went to Beor and lived there because of Abimelech, his brother. So now we're going to look at Abimelech's downfall. Scriptures tell about his downfall. And of course, when you self-appoint yourself, there is a downfall that comes if God is not behind you, which is the case with Abimelech. God hadn't raised him up to be a deliverer of Israel at all. So we begin to, to see this. Truth and sincerity are now abandoned. Beginning in verse 22. Abimelech ruled over Israel three years. Now look, now see, here shows God wasn't behind him because God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the leaders of Shechem. And the leaders of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech that the violence done to the 70 sons of Jeroboam might come and their blood be laid on Abimelech, their brother, who killed them, and on the men of Shechem who strengthened his hands to kill his brothers. And the leaders of Shechem put men in ambush against him on the mountaintops, and they robbed all who passed by them along the way. And it was told to Abimelech, and the Gal, the son of Ebed, moved into Shechem with his relatives, and the leaders of Shechem put confidence in him. And they went out into the fields and gathered the grapes from their vineyards and trod them and held the festival. And they went into the house of their God and ate and drank and reviled Abimelech. And Gaul, the son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech? And who are we of Shechem that we should serve him? Is he not the son of Jeroboam? And is not Zebul, his officers, served the men of Hammer, the father of Shechem. But why should we serve him? Verse 29, would that this people were under my hand. Then I would remove Abimelech. I would say to Abimelech, increase your army and come out. Then Zebul, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gaul, the son of Ebed. His anger was kindled, and he sent messengers to Abimelech secretly, saying, Behold, Gaul, the son of Ebed, and his relatives have come to Shechem, and they are stirring up the city against you. Now, therefore, go by night, you and the people who are with you, and set an ambush in the field. Then in the morning, as soon as the sun is up, rise early and rush upon the city. And when he and the people who are with him come out against you, you may do to them as your hand finds to do. So Abimelech and all the men who were with him rose up by night, set an ambush against Shechem in four companies. And Gaul, the son of Ebed, went out and stood in the entrance of the gate of the city. And Abimelech and the people who were with him rose from the ambush. And when Gaul saw the people, he said to Zebul, Look, people are coming down from the mountaintops. And Zebul said to him, You mistake the shadow of the mountain for men. Gaul spoke again and said, Look, people are coming down from the center of the land. One company is coming from the direction of the diviner's oak. Then Zebul said to him, Where is your mouth now? You who said, Who is Abimelech that we should serve him? Are not these people whom you despise? Go out now and fight with them. And Gal went out at the head of the leaders of Shechem and fought with Abimelech. 
And Abimelech chased him, and he fled before him, and many were, fell wounded up to the entrance of the gate. And Abimelech lived in Arma, and Zebul drove out Gaul and his relatives so that they could not dwell at Shechem. And on the following day, the people went out into the field, and Abimelech was told, and he took his people and divided them into three companies and set an ambush in the fields. And he looked and saw the people coming out of the city. So he rose against them and killed them. And Abimelech and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood at the entrance of the gate of the city while the two companies rushed upon all who were in the field and killed them. And Abimelech fought against the city all that day. And he captured the city, killed the people who were in it, and he razed the city and sowed it with salt. When all the leaders of the Tower of Shechem heard of it, they entered the stronghold of the house of Elberth. Abimelech was told that all the leaders of the Tower of Shechem were gathered together. Abimelech went up to Mount Zalem, he and all the people who were with him, and Abimelech took an axe in his hand, cut down a bundle of brushwood, and took it up, laid it on his shoulder, and he said to the men who were with him, What you have seen me do, hurry and do as I have done. So every one of the people cut down his bundle following Abimelech, put it against the stronghold, and they set the stronghold on fire over them so that all the people of the Tower of Shechem also died, about a thousand men and women. Now, verses 50 through 57 of Judges chapter 9, we're going to see truth is going to come out. Truth and sincerity are about to be maintained. Verse 50, beginning. Then Abimelech went to Thebes and encamped against Thebes and captured it. But there was a strong tower within the city, and all the men and women and all the leaders of the city fled to it and shut themselves in, and they went up to the roof of the tower. And Abimelech came to the tower and fought against it and drew near to the dough of the tower to burn it with fire. And a certain woman threw an upper millstone on Abimelech's head and crushed his skull. Oh, that had to hurt. Then he called quickly to the young man, his armor bearer, and said to him, Draw your sword and kill me, lest they say of me, A woman killed him. And his young man thrust him through and he died. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, every one departed to his house. Thus God, watch this, returned the evil of Abimelech, which he committed against his father in killing his 70 brothers. And God also made all the evil of the men of Shechem return on their heads. And upon them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jerubbabel. So there was a story of Abimelech. And now in chapter 10, we begin to learn real quickly, first two verses, these next judges are going to come real quick. They're not, they're minor judges, what we find them called, considered. So with that, chapter 10, verse 1, I know I've got nine up there, but this is actually chapter 10. After Abimelech, there arose to save Israel Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Iskar, and he lived at Shimer in the hill country of Ephraim. Now watch this. He judged Israel 23 years, then he died and was buried at Shamir. So there was really nothing big, nothing major, apparently, that Tola did that merited being remembered by history. So that's all we have about Tola in the book of Judges. Judges 10, verse 1 and 2. Next, 
we have Jer, the judge Jer. Chapter 10, verse 3. We have truth and sincerity are about to be overridden as we look at the judge Jer. Here it is. Verse 3. After him, that is Tola, arose Jer, the Gileadite, who judged Israel 22 years. He had 30 sons who rode on 30 donkeys, and they had 30 cities called Havath Jer to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. Jer died and was buried in Kaman. And so here we have a map of location of these latter judges we're about to get into. We have Abimelech, we have Tola, and somewhere on there, there it is, Jer, number eight, in Gilead, Jer. And we'll study Jer with this, finishing this lesson, then we'll get, we'll take up the exploits of Jephthah because there's a lot of exploits we need to look at with Jephthah. And we'll, we'll do that in, in the next lesson as we look. So here's where we are right now. Here's Tola. And then we have looked at, we'll look at uh, Jer at this time. And so chapter 10, verse 6. We begin to, we'll, we'll begin Jephthah, and then we'll stop at chapter 11 and finish him, uh, well, at the end of this chapter, and we'll finish him out in the chapter 10. Here's that cycle starting up again. Remember, first point, Israel sins, chapter 10, verse 6. The people of Israel, again, did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and served the bowels and the Ashereth. Remember the Asherah, the female God shows you the picture of. The gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the Ammonites, the gods of the Philistines. They forsook the Lord and did not serve him. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Step two. He sold them into the hand of the Philistines and into the hand of the Ammonites and served other gods. Therefore, he said, I will serve you no more. Simply, simply it. And they crushed and oppressed the people of Israel that year for 18 years. They oppressed all the people of Israel who were beyond the Jordan in the land of the Amorites which is in Gilead. Remember, we saw that Gilead on the map. And the Ammonites crossed the Jordan to fight also against Judah and against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim so that Israel was severely distressed. Now, guess what's going to happen next? Here it is, number three. The people of Israel cried out to the Lord saying, we have sinned against you because we have forsaken our God and have served the bowels. And the Lord said to the people of Israel, Did I not save you from the Egyptians, from the Amorites, from the Ammonites, and from the Philistines, the, Sidon, uh, the Sidonians also, the Amalekites, the uh, Maonites oppressed you, and you cried out to me, and I saved you out of their hand? Yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Therefore, I will save you no more. Go and cry out to the gods whom you have chosen, let them save you in the time of distress. And the people of Israel said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do to us whatever seems good to you. Only please deliver us this day. So they put away the foreign gods from among them, served the Lord God, and he became impatient over the misery of Israel. Then the Ammonites were called to arms, and they encamped in Gilead, and the people of Israel came together, and they encamped at Mizpah. And the people, the leaders of Gilead, said to one another, Who is the man who will begin to fight against the Ammonites? He shall be hid over all the inhabitants of Gilead. 
The Bible asked the question in Acts chapter 16, verse 30. The question was asked by the Philippian jailer, what must I do to be saved? The Bible reveals to us faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Hebrews 11, 6 tells us, He who comes to God must believe that He is. He's the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Jesus said to them, I'm going away and you will not seek me and you will die in your sins. And where I go, you cannot come. Therefore, He says, I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. Jesus told his disciples that very thing there that is important to understand in the plan of salvation. He now commands all men everywhere to repent, Acts 17, verse 30. Luke 13, 3 and 5, I tell you, no, unless you believe, you will all likewise perish. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, Romans 10.10. 10. Then we learn we're to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. He says, do you not know in Romans chapter 6 and verse 3, do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so, he says, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. There's the plan of salvation for the alien sinner. But we also learn that God has conditions for salvation for the Christian. What's the Christian to do? The Bible tells us that the Christian is to remain faithful. He who endures to the end will be saved. We learn that in Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. Revelation 2, 10. We're to be faithful unto death and we'll receive the crown of life. Well, what if the Christian sins? The Bible talks about that too. If the Christian sins, we learn in Acts the 8th chapter of a man named Simon the sorcerer, a magician. And we learn that he was told when he was baptized and wanted to buy the power of the laying on of hands, he was told that your money perish with you. He says to repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, Acts chapter 8 and verse 22. He was told to repent, change his life, change the way his thinking, change his attitude about the gospel as something to make money off of. Then we learn if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins, 1 John 1 and verse 9. But notice in Acts chapter 8 and verse 22, the rest of what Simon the sorcerer was told, not only was told to repent, therefore, this is wickedness, but he says, and pray to God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. There's what we must do to be saved, both as an alien sinner and then as a child of God, we're to remain faithful. But when we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, His Son. We're to repent of our sin. We're to confess Jesus. We're to confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. That is a child of God. And then we're to pray God to forgive us the thought and intent of our heart. And so that is the plan of salvation to the alien sinner and to the child of God when he sins. If you found this video helpful and wish to learn more, be sure you download the note card that goes with this lesson and our free four-lesson Bible correspondence course. You will find the links in the description below. We here at the Spring Hill Church of Christ meeting at 405 Butler Street in Spring Hill, Louisiana, want to help you with your growth and your knowledge of God's Word. Remember, we are in it for the likes and the subs, so be sure to like us, subscribe to our channel, and tell others. Thanks for watching. In the meantime, in between time, we will see you next time. Cheerio, mate, 
And with that, Bob's your uncle. <laughs>